Oh, hi. So you clicked on this video because you want to learn something related to dentistry. Well, you are on the right place. I am Dr. Hina, the voice and soul behind Dr. Teeth. And this is the platform where we make learning interesting and incredibly easy for you. So do leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And I will recommend you to join channel membership to watch our premium videos. You can also visit our website for online classes, courses, and MCQs. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. I hope that you all are safe in this pandemic. Have you seen marsupials? These are the animals that have pouches where they keep their babies. So from marsupials, we have marsupialization where we create a pouch. So easy to remember this way. Now, marsupialization is also known as cystotomy and it is also known as Parsh 1 because it was described by Parsh in 1892. And by the way, Parsh 2 is enucleation, also called as cystectomy. We will learn about enucleation in a separate video, but for now, let's concentrate on marsupialization. Now, marsupialization is another way of treating cyst. And basically what we do here, we create an opening in the cyst and we evacuate all the contents, that is decompression. So, marsupialization is a type of decompression. It is not decompression as such. It is a type of decompression because here also we are removing the cystic content and relieving the pressure so that the bone can grow. Okay. Now, you must be knowing that cyst grows by increased hydrostatic pressure. So, when we do this procedure, we basically decrease the pressure so that the bone growth can happen. And we also leave the cavity open during that time. We keep the pouch open during bone regeneration. Let us try to understand when do we do marsupialization? What are the indications? So, broadly, we have two major terms, marsupialization and enucleation. In marsupialization, we keep the cystic lining intact. We don't remove it. But in enucleation, we remove the entire cystic lining as well. But there are certain cases where removing the entire cystic lining is not possible. Maybe because we have vital structures or maybe the cyst is so large that, you know, it can lead to fracture of the fragment. Or in children where we have teeth within the jaw that needs to, you know, erupt. So, in all those cases, when we cannot do enucleation, we have an option of doing marsupialization. So, it is indicated in young children because it will preserve the tooth germ. It will help in normal eruption. Similarly, if the patient is a teenager, then also it will help in eruption of the unerupted tooth, which is associated with the cyst. Okay. The other indication is when we have a large cyst. So, if we do enucleation, there could be possibility of fracture. So then we do marsupialization. Also, if the cyst is very near to any vital structure or there can be formation of oronasal fistula, damage to vital tooth, then we do marsupialization. Now let us see the procedure. We will start by elevating the flap. We can give a circular elliptical incision or you can also give a H shaped incision. After this, we can use a rotary burr or rongers depending on the bone thickness and then we will remove the bone to reach the cyst. Now we have to keep here in mind that we have to remove the bone to the maximum diameter of the cyst if possible. This small area of the cyst lining, it will be sent for biopsy so that we can check if the cyst has any dysplastic potential. Now the cyst lining is sutured to the mucoperiosteum. We will then pack the cavity with a medicated ribbon gauze. After 10 to 14 days, we will remove this pack. Make sure that if the cyst is large, give anesthesia to the patient while doing this. And the cavity will be repacked. When the wound has completely healed, we will go for the prosthetic part. We will take an impression and we will construct a obturator. That is the acrylic plug. Now, we have to make sure here that this acrylic plug should be short of the cavity so that the bone can regrow. So with time what happens, so the bone will start growing slowly and with each appointment we will have to reduce the size of the acrylic plug. Coming to the advantages, now as you have seen it is a very simple procedure and we are saving the risk of damage to any vital structure. 
but the disadvantage here is that we are leaving the cystic lining there that can lead to neoplastic changes who knows there can be a neoplastic change and we are taking that risk also there could be chances of infection so we have to make sure that we keep on changing the gauze at regular intervals and properly irrigate it to prevent infection now mass supplementation has two important modifications one is the valdrons procedure where we do mass supplementation followed by enucleation and the second one is mass supplementation by opening into the maxillary sinus or nose so if you want me to cover that video as well do let me know in the comment section below i'll cover it otherwise in the next video we will be covering enucleation so i hope you found the video helpful and if you did please like this video and share it with your colleagues it will help me reach more students and ultimately help the platform grow and that will help me to create more videos of this kind so i'll see you in the next video take very good care of yourself allah hafiz